GPS is just kind of not online for whatever reason. But I just, I can't help but find myself thinking, I I just can't believe how much the wild, wild west is still so wild. Like, there's just nothing for miles. And certain areas seem like they get so congested. And yet how... And then these open range signs. I'm not 100% positive, but what I think it means is that these cattle go wherever the heck they want. They're not fenced in. They just roam. I don't know if anything holds them back. And I just saw a sign for wildlife viewing area with binoculars. I don't know what kind of wildlife. I was told, yes, this is mountain lion country, and yes, there are rattlesnakes. Because I said, if I just pull over to take a picture, do I need to be concerned about snakes? He's like, yeah. But they're not rampant. But also that I'm most likely to see them on the road sunning themselves. Um, so, <sighs> I also asked, like, there weren't really any signs to say that this cool stuff was inside. He's like, I don't want that. You know, I want people to just basically like I did, wander in and find it that way. He said 80% of people, <laughs> it's the same thing. Like they just kind of stop for gas because he's the only one around and then wander on in. <clears throat> and I mean, that's cool. And he's like, you know, he, he's aware that I'm intending to put this on YouTube, but like I don't have a huge channel <coughs> where millions of people <coughs> are going to find out about this. And I, I don't think people are going to go out of their way to go to this place. My guess is if people knew about it, they might, you know, choose to stop there instead of an hour away, perhaps. But this is very out of the way, and it's not like an amusement park. I don't think people are going to go hundreds of miles just for a hamburger and cool stones when there are cool stones in, in a lot of places. So... I would say if your your route is taking you by here, then by all means, make it a point to stop um, and maybe have a meal and look at the cool stones and get to talk to them. Now, <coughs> the lady who was running things, she started telling me about the opals and then she brought him in to tell me more. Um, so what I learned about opals. <coughs> I'm used to the opals that like have tons of rainbow and he called this chaotic that like crystals like to form a crystal structure and the opals it's like silicate that comes in something about clay and like if you put your handprint in it leaves the print and because she had been saying about like a tree trunk and then the tree decays and then there's like calcium but then the silicate comes in around it and he was saying it's like a ball pit like when you jump in the ball pit it goes away but then it comes back so if I understood correctly, and I repeated this to him, and he said, yeah, that's, that's right, that, um, you know, like, the calcium or the other minerals are like the balls, and the silicate is like the air between the balls kind of holding it in place. So, <clears throat> there's special care with the opal curing process, I guess. <clears throat> so, she, the lady said, even though this is a desert, the opals, you know, have moisture in them. And so, when they're found you soak them in water for, I don't know if it's weeks or months. And so the ones that were in the display case are being soaked in water first. Then you put them in mineral oil. <coughs> she said the mineral oil sucks out the water from them and replaces it with minerals. He said it's not quite that, but the mineral oil helps the water come out slowly and you've got to be patient. He said that some of the bigger pieces are in the mineral oil for like six to eight months, I think he said. And then they're kind of like more stable. And then I know she had been, so he, she told me he's the more knowledgeable one. I got to toss my hair out the window. Even though I brushed it, just putting my fingers through it, <laughs> it pulls out a, a bit more. Um, so, I guess when they're going to put it in jewelry, like, they might seal it with epoxy or something else to kind of hold it in place. And I get they had pieces that weren't, like, 
mean, they, they were kind of smooth, but I guess it was like you, you have a backing with epoxy and that is because they like it in the natural state where you put the pendant necklace thing on it, but it's just kind of held in place with the epoxy and it's just like a natural stone. It's not like in a setting. And I think that's kind of cool, but at the same time, I still like the opal that's really rainbowy. I don't know if that's chunks so much together, which is what I've heard. <coughs> and that does make sense because if it's so brittle, I could see there being chunks. And so he put this flashlight on it and showed me different things. And then there was this rose quartz that was like a huge ball, like this big. And he put a light on it and there was like six, like a six star pattern. And he said that's because it's so much more organized. <coughs> and even though there's like lines and what looks like different colors in there, that rose quartz is all organized whereas the opal is known for being chaotic. And I guess maybe that's one reason I'm drawn to opal. It's like my brain has a lot of thoughts all at once all the time and it's not necessarily as organized. Now what I also don't understand, when I lost perception previously, my GPS still worked and it seemed to know where I was. It's just continually saying rerouting. Now I don't know if it's counting down the amount of time I have left on the drive. Right now it says 6 hours and 13 minutes. So we'll see if that changes. I'm also finding it interesting, I've I've continued putting the dye in my hair that I was told lasts the longest, and I really haven't washed it that many times since, and yet I feel like it's fading quite a bit. But I kind of like it. Like I kind of like as it gets back to some blonde slightly. But then I also wonder, does it look faded? <coughs> and is this, like... Do I maybe like this more? And when it's fresh, it actually looks like not overdyed, but like so saturated that like there aren't there aren't as many dimensions as the girl who had done mine originally said. And like this is pink. Anyway, I call this huckleberry hair because I had hot pink, purple, and then a little bit of blue that I streaked throughout. But I think the blue might have gone over the purple. So if I redo things, I might just like streak some blue through to kind of just see like what, what is it like that color, refreshing. I don't know. I'll either do streaks or like the bottom portion or the back portion. <coughs> <coughs> so, opal is very fragile and can be brittle when it dries out too fast. And she had talked about it being like a cake that you bake it. No, he said, I think. No, maybe they both said. Anyway, a cake is like baked at 500 degrees. On the outside, it's like done and, and maybe even burnt, but the inside is like not even done yet. So, that's how opal can be. That's why you have to maybe stabilize the water coming out of it or cure it in a way that is more gentle. And he said, he kept, I think he used the term old heads versus new heads. <laughs> I don't know if it just means old guys who hunt rocks, their methods. And he said his is like his way, but everybody's got a different way. Now, I don't know if, the, if you can do other oils besides mineral oil, but either way like I feel like if a random person just picked up opal from the ground they wouldn't necessarily know that you have to do that with it and I wonder like these pieces that come off can they be ground up and like you know put in epoxy or smushed down and made pretty there was this like I had a feeling they wouldn't have it in display if it were a real opal piece like this big <coughs> It was all rainbowy, and it said it was like epoxy and something. Now, I don't know what element of it makes it um, makes it um, rainbowy. I'm guessing not actual opal, but either way, point being, it. Um, It looked cool, and I think even for decoration, artificially created rocks are cool. Just like those those wall paintings that look like a big old geode. I kind of want to learn how to do that, but I don't want to... I'd like to learn like in a class where I can do one and see how I like it, not get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of supplies and then find out I'm not as into it. Or something. So, <clears throat> I don't know where I keep coming up with these pieces of hair. Or maybe I think they're going out the window, they're not. 
<coughs> so now I'm at 10 minutes of a video. I told you a little bit about the opal stuff. I wrote some notes. Got the silicate. And then I thought she was saying cabochons, but she said another word, like caveat. Oh, caveons. I haven't heard that word. I asked how to spell it, and she wasn't sure. So, but she certainly seemed to know some stuff, but then she was saying the guy knew more. But she said it with such confidence. It was like, you seem like you know what you're talking about. Um, so I guess that guy might be the one who owns the store and presumably the motel. <coughs> there was a card. And then there's this Peacock Opal Mines, which sounded cool. And I can't tell if these are like rain and thunder in the, in the distance because the past few days in Oregon have definitely had lots of lightning and thunder. And... Um, I tried getting video, but it's like I have no idea how people get photos of these because you you don't know when it's going to go off. So how do you capture it? I'm also feeling like maybe I want some chocolate, and I had like when I got out of the car, I kept smelling chocolate. I'm like, does this dirt smell like chocolate in Oregon? And I'd had a chocolate drink, but it wasn't even, like, it was smelling more strong outside the car. I'm like, well, this doesn't make any sense. It's not like I spilled it that I know of. So, anyway, I am hoping I complete my trip today. Right now, it has me getting there before 10 p.m., although that probably does not count the time change yet, so maybe before 11 if I'm lucky, but I'm sure I'll have to stop at least once more. Right now, my gas tank says 390 miles. And it says I've got 426 miles to my destination. So, inevitably have to stop at least once, if not for the bathroom, etc. Um, and I wish Google made it more clear when you're traveling. Like, okay, yes, rest area in this many miles, but here's what to expect of it. Like, this rest area is like an outhouse. If you could wait an hour, you'll have a much nicer indoor bathroom real soap, etc. But I guess it's nice that they have some options. Funny thing is, the guy I saw at that rest stop I ended up seeing at this gas station, and I was asking him if like his pump was going so slow. As soon as he stopped, my pump picked up the pace a lot. And he said it was, he thought it was the girls who were there before me, like, pushing buttons, but I think it was because he had a giant SUV that was probably taking, well, he said he only put 13 gallons in, but it seemed like while he was pumping, it was very slow for mine. So, this was like a, definitely kind of like an old style pump. It did take credit card, but not Apple Pay. Thankfully inside the store they took Apple Pay. And <coughs> I got some amethyst, and I'm, I'm just gonna say this. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Oh, there's a rest of it. I put it down my shirt. Um, the headache is mostly gone, but... Oh, he called this a chevron amethyst. Presumably because of the stripes, and I guess it's got the quartz with it. So, I'd been wanting, like, clear or rose quartz anyway, because that was the other thing that said it was good for headaches. I like how warm this feels, but anyway, I realized, like, there's always this pocket here in my shirt. I could always store a rock in there. And then it has it kind of on my heart. I could certainly sleep that way, although I don't wear that when I sleep. But, um, anyway, you know, because I have rocks like that, but <laughs> I kind of wish I had, like, a, something to hold them in, like, a, almost like a necklace, or, I suppose I could just put them in, like, a fanny pack or my pocket, but I guess in my pocket I think they're going to fall out, so I wish I had some satchel type thing to have them on me and near me, to, in case they do emit helpful properties but in a way that will keep them with me and not falling, but not having to put them in a setting to, to be in a necklace that I might not want to wear all the time. Like, something that I could wear as I want to. So that's what I learned about opals. I better check my notes again, just in case. But I am glad to be driving during the daylight hours and able to see things. I hope that when I go by the salt flats, I'll, it'll still be late enough to to um, see them, because that's one reason I wanted to not drive all night last night, is I wanted to be able to see things. Even if I've seen, even though I've seen the salt flats, I wanted to be able to see um, see them again, because they're pretty, and they're interesting, and they're cool. And I want to see what is the deal.
deal with the vehicles on them. So I think I'm gonna be done for now. Oh my gosh, I'm, fit, I'm at 15 minutes. So hopefully people will find this who actually wanna listen to all this and maybe the descriptions. It's so weird, almost like steam is coming out of the ground. Um, hopefully descriptions will, or the captions, the auto captions will help people. So with that, health and